guys, this is Fee Diamond Enough and I got my yums box. That's uh, so my universal yums. Today is the 14th of October. Now, the last time I did the yums box, the yum yum box, it was a case of got notified, told it was shipped, and I saw everybody unboxing. Um, and I've just gone to YouTube and I can't see where anybody else has unboxed this. So, like the last time I did it, last time I received one, um, I'd already seen what people had received. So this one, I haven't actually seen. I do know it is from, I do believe it's from Austria, that way they've advertised, put it up. Um, if I put that way, a place where the hills are alive. I thought Switzerland when it said it first, so who knows, but Austria, how cool is that? Right, so, oops, I did, I've come prepared. I have a plate, the box, wet ones or <laughs> for anything sticky that I, like I had last time but here we go uh, woohoo excited excited oh, no nope. I've just unboxed opened up the wrong way I think my details on the back are hidden okay how about we do it? there we go <gasps> cool the oak look at that Austria excellent uh, okay <laughs> How cool is that? So what you've got where Austria is, you've got Germany here, Italy here, Slovenia here, Hungary here, Slovakia there. I don't actually say what's it. I don't know my geography guys, sorry. I don't know what is to the north of Austria. Maybe I should. Okay, so here we go. How cool is Okay, Ooh, do do Clerk Lurgenford. I'm trying to read this off the screen so you guys can see it. There's a secret puzzle again here for next month's uh, choose a player, choose one player, the game master, form a circle around that player, game master, will then shout one of four words. If you was the stum or Blitz, depending on which word he or she shouts, the other players must race perform the corresponding action. Fear is fire, wasa is water, storm is storm, and blitz is lightning. Cool. So there we go, that's so it's you've got to perform the action. Okay, so Austria, let the fun begin. Okay, no. Bottom of it. Let the yum box adventure begin. So this is the yum yum box. So there's two box, three boxes. The yum box, which has six. Yum yum box, which has 12. And the super yum, I think is 18. I don't know. Uh, this is my second month of receiving this. And um, as a trial, I did six months. I did it as a gift for myself. Yes, I brought myself a gift of six months of snack. Um, but yeah, so let's get into what's in here look at this chips oh. um, for those guys that at work um, <laughs> what I did last time I unboxed the universal yums and I took the took the snacks into work and there's quite a few people enjoyed it uh, it's a I won't take it in on day shift it goes in on night shift so Friday night snacks here they are for anybody that is actually um, at, Anybody that's at my work has seen this, which I, it's a couple of people subscribed, but I don't know. Okay, so little snapshot, sh snapshots, snapshots of Gross, Gross Glocker, Wolfgang Amadeus, Shunbrum Palace. Uh, how well do you know Austria? Some questions there. But what we're here for is the food. Yum. Okay. We're starting off with the chips. So Kelly's chips. I'll read through this one as I pull it out. Oh, there's some yummies under there. Uh -huh. 
Uh, between 1867 and 1918, Austria was part of Austria-Hungary, an empire where the two countries shared power and spices. It was during this time that Austria became hooked on paprika. Oh, oh. Thanks to a man named Janos Kotjani, raised in Sigred, Hungary. I'm hoping I'm not absolutely crucifying these words, these, these names and letters, words, whatever. Kotjani dreamt of exploring this world and hoped to save enough money to do so by selling paprika. He grew his own red peppers, dried them and processed them, processed his secret spicy blend in his own mill. Then in, then in 1887, Kotjani made a decision that would change his life forever. He moved the business to Vienna. Okay. Not only did he get to explore the bustling new city, but his paprika became an instant Austrian sensation, spicing up dishes across the country. Fast forward to modern day Austria and Kotiani paprika is still considered the country's most iconic blend, which is why we bring you these flavorful chips. Absolutely bursting with Kotiani's sweet and spicy legacy. This yum is so delicious. We hope you're very Austria hungry. Sorry guys, I'm just looking for my peg tips which are not there. And there goes the tissues. Sorry. Uh, just grab clips so that when I cushion, I can seal these bags up. But here we go. So, Kelly's Paprika. Air pack. My camera just... Here we go. Paprika Kotia. It's got a coffee and a name on it. Details of energy. Yeah, yeah everything else that I just can't read. <laughs> so they, there we go. Energy, fat, all the details on there. Here we go. I, we did the Greek box last month and really did enjoy that. I liked everything in the Greek box. There were some that wasn't absolute. I wouldn't. Okay, so I'm so glad that Austria has the same issue as Australia. So if you look at this packet, it looks pretty big. <laughs> yeah, it's not even a full packet. So, <laughs> glad to see they do their packaging the same as Australian chips. Smell too bad. Okay. Oh, yum. Oh. Okay. Mm. Oh, yeah. I could sit here and eat these. I've... Yeah. All right. Mm. I have managed to. Oh, yum. <laughs> so that's all clamped up. Right here. Oh, yum, 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 yum. Do you like them? They are a real savoury. Real savoury. Yum. Okay. Pish. Seriously. Pishinger Mandel Ecken. Girl, pronounce that. But almond cream filled wafers coated, coated in milk, cho milk, chocolate and almonds. Ho, 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 ho. That's these babies. All right. Let's see if the camera can focus on those. Um, Want to hear something nuts? In the late 19th century, Austrian confectioner Oscar Pischinger <laughs> created a plain round wafer that one saw astronomical sales, two, launched his company to fame, and three, earned the admiration of the royal court. While we love wafers as much as the next person, or more, who are we kidding? Uh, we were sceptical that a simple wafer could really accomplish all that, yet it did, but only because it was a main ingredient in an extremely tasty cake. Oscar marketed his ordinary wafer to use in a special cake. 
the Pashinga Tort, which be quickly became the hottest recipe in the Austrian Empire. To make it, 12 wafers were sh the To make it, 12 wafers are slathered in rich chocolate spread, placed on top of each other, and then covered in a gooey layer of melted chocolate. With this chocolatey yum, you'll get the taste of pishing a tort with a slightly upgraded delicious almond cream and crispy almond topping. Now that's really nuts. Oh god. Oh god. Okay. So scissors for this one. Um details of what's in there that's good for you and bad for you and the amount of content. How look at, they look really good. Wafer cake with almond cream filling in whole milk chocolate. Nom 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 nom. Okay, here we go. Ooh, strong smell. Okay, so here we go. That's what they look like. Let's give it a try. What do we think? Look okay so far? <laughs> See the arm in the neck. Oh yeah, here we go. Alright. Wafers. I think what I'm tasting is the almond filling, oh it's really it is really nice. The chocolate is a different taste to Australian chocolate. Um, and that's where I'm just struggling with the different type of chocolate. But, yep, yum. I will say though, the chips so far, number one for me so far. Okay. Mmm, it is all gone. Oh, okay. Um, I think I started to mention I've managed to get, I think I've got two people at work <laughs> purchasing these boxes now. Okay. Kelly's Snips. When we came across the, this yum, we had a few questions. The first, why is an American flag? There we go. Oh. Why is there an American flag in this package? The answer takes us back to 65 years after World War II. American soldier Howard Morse Kelly decided to stay in Austria, Austria to start a snack company with his business partner, Herbert Rast. Today, Kelly's is the top snack manufacturer in Austria. Paying homage to their founder with these patriotic puffs. Our second question, when do locals eat them? Given that snips are one of the country's top three snacks, the answer was simple, pretty much all the time. We're talking parties, holiday gatherings, movie nights, you name it. That got us extra excited for our next session. What do they taste like? Dig in and you'll discover the unmistakable rich and savoury flavour of salted peanuts. You might even find yourself asking your own question like, how did I eat these so fast? Okay, now here, Kelly's original. Let's see if it's got the usual, may contain nuts. <laughs> okay, so Kelly's original snacks. Number one selection. All the details like that. Hmm. And off goes the top. Oh, and the bag is full. How cool is that? The bag is actually full. <laughs> and has a peanut smell. Has a spiced peanut smell. I think they're meant to look like peanuts. Right. There we go. Okay. 
Makes me think of crunchy peanut butter or, well, combination of crunchy or smooth. But, tastes like peanut butter. Ho oh, ho, I can see why you eat this so easy. <laughs> um. Oops. <laughs> okay. Yum. Peanut butter. If you like peanut butter, you're going to love these. These are yummy. And a couple of clips. Um, let's put that plate out of the way. It doesn't look like I'm needing my plate, which is a good thing. Okay, so I'm now actually putting that in place. I'm putting these in order of how I like them. Okay, next one. Big banana. Oh, there we are. Mint. It can banana mint. <laughs> Big banana. Austria is, so let's see, have a close look at that. There's too much going on in the background for it to focus on. Okay. Austria is totally bananas for bananas. Surprise, you should be. With the snow-capped Alps covering over 60% of Austria's land, land, the country isn't exactly equipped to grow tropical bananas. Nevertheless, they're Austria's second most popular fruit, right behind apples. You could say they're second banana. <laughs> to satisfy local demand of whopping uh, 107, 229 tonnes of bananas imported from Dominican Republic every year. From there, the fruits are distributed to the supermarkets or transformed into the one, one of the country's most iconic treats, the Choco Banana. Readily available, available at convenience stores countrywide, these dark chocolate-coated banana mousse sweets are the most popular and delicious way for locals to chow down on their favourite fruit. We predict you'll do just as the Austrians do when you try it and go absolute bananas. So this one when I open this one, this one won't be going to work at all. No chance because I will, oh, this is a bar that I'm just, just not going to share. <laughs> you don't share your button, chocolate bars. Okay, so big banana. <laughs> uh, all I can say is to this one person dearly crafted, get your mind out of the gutter. Um, that's that's got to be a dark chocolate and it's sticky it's it's sticky see how that's actually sticky okay Woo. oh whoop. there we go hey, hang on is that camera gonna focus on it for you yeah. anyway so this looks like it's coated in dark chocolate and it very Oh, um, how do I put it? It's bananary, but it's not bananary. Um, um, oh, no, no, oh, yeah, okay, that's bottom of the list for me. Ah. And very sticky. Hang on, wet ones. Okay. Um, I don't know. Dark chocolate, I'm not keen on. But that banana was. Um, best way to describe it. So I like my bananas where the skin is yellow, greenish yellow. This banana is banana when the skin is brown. Okay, that's what this tastes like. That's, this is the brown skin banana. So this is where it's been ripe and ripe, ripe. That's bottom, bottom, definitely bottom. Not keen on that one at all. How's that? Something chocolate. I didn't like it. Woohoo! Oh, there's two of these. Good, good. I'll be able to share. Milch. Milch wafers, strawberry cream filled wafer with chocolate. Okay, pop quiz. In Austria, anise is the word for a particular fruit. K 
can you guess which? Nope, it's not banana. Anna's actually refers to pineapple and strawberry. Let's explain. In the early 20th century, Austria had tons of wild farm strawberries called Erdbeeren, but, apparent, but barely any pineapples called anise. Seeking to differentiate the different strawberry varieties, Austrians decided to call the wild ones Erdbeeren and the farm ones anise. Repurchased the unused word for pineapple. Everything was great, that is, until the 1970s when Austria started importing pineapples from the US. Since they had already repurposed the name anise, they had to come up with a new name for the fruit, eventually settling on Hawaiian anise. <laughs> Phew. To recap, Austrians prefer strawberries by either anise or erdbein. So you can use both or describe the creamy filling inside this crispy chocolatey wafer. But we think you'll end up to using a totally different word Delicious. Okay, now if I wave that around upside down, and there we go, milch wafers, Wa wafers actually. It's not wafers. It's wafers. Can you read that? Do you understand that? Okay. So I have two of these, which means one will go to work, and one won't. <laughs> Okay. <coughs> right. Very, 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 very sweet, sweet smell, smelling. Okay. Oh. There we go. How we go? So there's a wafer. You can see chocolate. You can see wafer. And it looks like strawberry as well. Okay. Oh, look at all my crumble in the desk. Oh, very crumbly. Okay. Okay. It is... I'm putting it in position already. It's actually a really nice wafer. Smells a bit funny. Can't quite put my finger on it, but... It does smell a bit funny. But, yum. Yum. Oh, gum. Oh, yeah. Let's wipe this up a little bit. Okay. Oh, I did like that. Um, okay. No need to seal that one up. Next one, Bobby Caramel Bar. Mm. Mm. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Okay, me, Bobby. Hang on. Foot milk chocolate bar with caramel nougat and crispy wheat rice. Mmm, that, that, yum. That's the name of the dapper fella on this candy wrapper. And the subject of Austria's favourite jokes. No one knows who came up with came up with Count Bobby jokes, but they likely rose in the 20th century as a way of poking fun at Austrian elites. The jokes centre on Count Bobby, a bumbling aristocrat who is always missing the point. Take this one, for example. Count Bobby reads that in Munich, a pedestrian is struck by a car every hour. Shocked, he exclaims, that poor pedestrian. Jokes such as these, <laughs> jokes such as these, have kept Austrians laughing for decades, and by the 1950s, Count Bobby had become a household name, inspiring lengthy book, lengthy joke books, films starring Austrian Peter Alexander, and even hit this very chocolate bar. The Bobby Bar is premiered in 1967, quickly becoming just as iconic with its comedic namesake with its rich milk chocolate, crunchy rice krispies, and soft, soft caramel filling. This sweet doesn't have us laughing, it has us drooling. I have to admit, caramel bar, milk chocolate bar with caramel. Uh, another one that won't be going to work because it is a bar. So this will get eaten. Talking about that big banana bar, I'm not sure if I'm gonna eat that at all. 
Opa! Pobre! Come on. Since 1967. That's cute. That's really cute. Okay. So it's not a dark chocolate, which is good. It's a milk chocolate. And oh, oh, how cool! See the rice crisps are all the way around. Nom 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 nom. <laughs> yum 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 yum. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I shouldn't have shoved all of that in my mouth. That's really good. That's a nice chocolate bun. Mmm. I am. I love caramel. And I can't decide whether it's above or below the paprika chips. But. So I'll put it in line. me <laughs> that was really good okay so the next one is the Hasna gingerbread soft gingerbread with hazelnuts almonds who's that there hang on this doesn't look like doesn't have that Hasna Sorry, it, might, it just doesn't have that Kastner label on it, but it looks the same. Okay, soft gingerbread with hazelnuts, almonds, candied orange and sugar glaze. We thought about waiting to put this gingerbread in, gingerbread in our holiday box, but that decision would not have been very Austrian. You see, Austrians don't just eat in gingerbread during the holidays, they eat it all year round. Their soft round gingerbread cookie is packed with anything from honey and anise to chocolate and nuts are enjoyed way beyond the winter season. Locals eat them as a midday snack, a dessert, you name it. There's really no bad time for a little gingerbread. After trying this delectably sweet varied packed with hazelnuts, almonds, honey and candied orange peels. We're convinced Austria has it right. The season of gingerbread should never end. Okay. So it is um, squishy. It is squishy. Okay. Oh. Definite gingerbread. Definite gingerbread. Okay. Gosh. Oh, it's got like the base is hard. It's not on a paper, is it? No. It's just a hard wafer base. You see there. Okay, here we go. Is it paper? I don't know. Oh, I just want to see. Doesn't say that it's sitting on paper, but it feels <laughs> it almost tastes like it. See, that looks like it's paper, but it's not. Let's get past that bit. Let's have a little top here. So the top it is, it is spongy. Oh, it is actually quite nice. You can taste the ginger, but you can taste all the other fruits in it. Can really taste the orange peel in it. There we go. That's what I can really taste is the orange. Oh, so, that's actually not bad. But. I went to a shop, where would I put it? 
Oh, I don't know. Okay, hang on. There we go. I will put it there because I can't. So far, the snipes there, there, and a messy desk. Let's put those over there on the plate. There we go. Nut Joe Hasselnuss Wafer. Mmm. Okay. Nut joke. I'm guessing this has got hazelnut or not. Out. Hazelnut and chocolate cream filled wafers. There's a lot of wafers. They have wafers. Life is sweeter in Vienna, at least according to the world famous Mercer Quality of Living Survey. For a whopping 10 years straight, the extensive report has ranked Vienna the number one city in the world for its quality of life. So what makes Vienna so great? Well in, addition, <clears throat> well, in addition to receiving perfect scores for healthcare, education and infrastructure, the city is also a bustling cultural hub, home to incredible art museums and iconic music venues like the Siena State Opera. And did we mention its unbeatable cuisine? Look no further than the yum in your hand and this mouth-watering chocolate hazelnut wafer was invented in Vienna in 1898 and has since become local, a local, local specialty. With this extra crispy version, topped with hazelnuts and rich chocolate, you can taste yourself, taste for yourself what makes life in Vienna so sweet. Okay, so rich chocolate generally to me means it's a dark chocolate. Look at that. <laughs> Mm, 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 mm. Okay. Nope, not open yet. So nut joe. See the hazelnuts on there. Waf waffle. Not wafer, it's a waffle. It's so it uh, yeah, I was right. It is another dark chocolate. Gosh, these are Oh, crumbling. Oh, look at that. It zoomed in nicely. You can see the hazelnuts on the top. Okay. Oh, yum. Yum. Another, yeah, another good, good wafer. Um, Ferrero Rocher's something in the Greek one that had the flavour of what I thought was Ferrero Rocher's. Mmm. Okay, yummy. Yummy. Yep. Well, mm. Where do I go rank this one? I actually rank it there. Behind the the strawberry wafer. Okay. Well, that, that one's still just sitting to the side. Don't want to know anything about it. Rightio. So, next. So, I think now I've reached the yum yum section. Still got nuts. Okay. Kitty's Oh Kitty's creamy onion mini treats. Ah and that up right now. There we go. Ah look, you can see that one. Last month we learned that Greeks aren't typically big on breakfast. Austrians they couldn't be more different. They eat it twice. It all started in northwestern Austria where rural potato farmers needed more food to fuel the labour intense harvest. Labour intensive harvest. The farmers came up with two ideas to eat a second breakfast at 10 a.m. called Jouse and Two. Lord of the Rings, second breakfast. <laughs> To use their freshly harvested potatoes in a new dish for the occasion, the dish was toast spread called K 
Kartoffelisk. Okay, seriously, I have. Don't know if you can see that. Meaning potato cheese made from mashed potatoes, onions, and sour cream. Today, kartoff <coughs> remains one of the most popular joust dishes in Austria. It's so popular that it even inspired this oniony potato snack version. Sells to us like a free pass to start snacking at 10 a.m. And if anyone asks why you're eating savoury sticks for breakfast, feel free to say it's actually second breakfast. Thank you very much. Well, oh, Lord of the Rings, second breakfast. Okay. This bag feels a little bit fuller than the last one that was that one there. So, creamy onion mini fritz. Hi, Peggy. Oh, it's half a bag. <coughs> oh. oh, okay. Does, do I sound like I'm really eager to try these? One, one, do that one. It tastes like onion. More that you'd slice up onion and, and just fry the onion. It, it doesn't seem like there's any chip in there at all. But you, you would be forgiven for thinking that that is just deep fried onions or sliced up onions thrown in the dripping thrown in the um, hot oil and fried are you hearing the crunch there? as a savoury snack it's actually quite nice what is going on with my nose and it's itchy oh yes I like that um, believe it or not Here we go. I must have a bit of a savoury taste to myself at the moment. Okay, okay, here we go. This is the one that I've been eyeing off in the corner. See this little Shoko. I'm nearly at the bottom of my box. Anyway, all oh, these will go down while it works. I do believe. Shoko Ud. Berin. Well, strawberries. I already learned that one. Da this is where I go. The dark chocolate coated strawberry mousse. Now the big banana, dark co dark chocolate banana mousse. And I was excited about it. Let's stay excited. Oh, let's stay excited. Convince myself to stay excited. Normally chocolate covered strawberries represent romance. But not these Choco Edwin. They're all about risk. In 1960, Viennese confectioner Franz Houseworth decided he needed more space for his candy making. So he took a huge gamble. He moved the business from the bustling heart of Austria to the vast, sparsely populated farm state of Bergenland. But the real risk wasn't the lack of nearby customers. It was that this new territory location was only a mile from Soviet territory during the Cold War. The division between the USSR and the rest of Europe, that must have been what's on the border. Uh, during the Cold War, the division between the USSR and the rest of Europe fell directly on Austria's eastern border, border meaning France's company stood at the very edge of the Western world. Luckily, his gamble paid off. Not only was the location ideal for exporting after the Cold War, but it was also smack dab in the middle of Austria's strawberry farming hub. This delicious result, these decadent dark chocolate treats filled with real strawberry mousse, now that you know the risks went, that went into these choco strawberries, will admit there are also some romance to them. You're about to fall head over here. Okay. Dark chocolate. Not a fan of dark chocolate. 
Okay. Oh. Uh, so I'm not a fan of dark chocolate. Hundred percent. And they, it, this smells so much like that. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah. Let's have a look at them. It's a full, very full bag, and they are strawberry shaped. I am going to seal that up straight away because that's too much of a chocolate, dark chocolate smell for my liking. I might even take these on day shift. Nah, maybe not. We'll see. Rightio. Whew. Right. I didn't actually show you the bag properly, did I? So let's see how we go. Am I going to eat the bottom? The bottom bit's going to be the stronger with chocolate. <laughs> so oh so sick oh so sickly sweet oh I mean it is a definite mousse sort of focus on it but I'm not even going to finish that. It is so sickly sweet. No. Oh, that's as bad as... Those two are in, in par with each other. Guys at work might like it, but I'm not that keen on it. Okay. Whoa. Please don't be dark chocolate. Okay. Here we go. So the next one. This is a chocolate bar, by the look of it. Volmich Chocolade, 30% cocoa milk chocolate bar. <clears throat> if history is an indication, this Austrian chocolate might just drive you mad. When chocolate first arrived in Austria, sorry, I still got to taste that other one, it caused instant pandemonium among Austrian royals. They went absolutely nuts over the rich, velvety del delicacy, so much that it was famously dubbed as Inflamer of Passions by Viennese professor Johann Rauch. In 1615, Princess Anne of Austria that had become so obsessed with, the cho with chocolate that her wedding gift to her groom, King Louis the 13th of France was a chest filled with the finest chocolate concoctions money could buy. And when Marie Antoinette left Austria to marry Louis XVI in, 19, uh, in 1770, she didn't just bring 57 carriages and 376 horses, she also brought her personal Viennese chocolatier. Nowadays, the cocoa craze is far from over. The Austrian chocolate industry rates over $1 billion annually. So as you savour this mouth-watering fine milk chocolate, try to remain calm and, oh, who are we kidding? Eat it fast before someone takes it for themselves. <laughs> and bowl print. Is it going to do it? Nope. There you go. So this is, by the sound of it, they're saying it's a milk chocolate. So, which is the lighter chocolate? Please be, please be. Yes, yes. Ooh, it's not dark. Darkish. Okay. So, there's one, two. I'm only going to take one of these out. Okay. And I peek back. I'm quite sure the guys at work, guys and gals, it's all guys are just the people at work, the peeps at work. Look at all here. Volumich Chocolade. It 
It smells like dark chocolate though. <sighs> Doesn't taste like dark chocolate. <laughs> but I must have a savoury tooth, tooth at the moment. Yeah, I'll put that aside. I will finish off. Um, believe it or not, it's not above. Uh, it's not above the gingerbread, ginger biscuit. Oh, I will put that down and finish off later. Oh, after I've had a, it actually it'd go well with a hot chocolate or a cup of coffee. Now, the last one, which is the one that I saw. <laughs> you can't see it. So this is the one that I saw in the box when they had it on Facebook. So it's cool mint, lemon. And I'm like going, what? What? <sighs> and it's a dark chocolate. <laughs> Mother, look at it. I hope not. Cool mint lemon. Lemon, lemon peppermint patties with chocolate coating. If you've ever drank orange juice right after brushing your teeth, you probably learnt the hard way that citrus and mint can be a recipe for disaster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when we first come across this lemon peppermint patty, it's safe to say we were leering. But given that we're fearless international adventurers, we buck, bucked up and tried it, and we're so glad we did. Turns out Austria has a history of mainly innovation. Back in 1927, Edward Haas III invented the now iconic Pez candies, or PZ candies, which were originally favoured with peppermint. Austria's peppermint pioneers have done it again here by finding a way to make the citrus and mint mint combination work. This yum's zingy lemon flavour flavour comes through instantly, enhancing the refreshing blast of peppermint that follows in the end. What could have been a recipe for disaster was a really a recipe for deliciousness. Okay. Well, actually you can see the lemon blasting out like an ice cube. Read that. Scolic and praline mit Give up. Okay, so this opens here. Oh, it opens. Actually, it opens quite nicely. Well, maybe nicely. And. Oh, cool. Nicely. Hang on. Nice, kind of nicely packaged. Ooh. Okay, so let's give one a go. It's dark chocolate again. It is dark chocolate, and that's. Oh, yeah. I was looking forward to these, and it's dark chocolate. Alright. <coughs> That's my struggle. I can't get past the smell of dark chocolate, so don't sniff it. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, there, Wazer. <laughs> mm. So that, there we go. I'm not going to focus on the biscuit, on the, on the. So the, the lemon flavour is right over top and you've just got this background hint of mint. Don't I sound like a connoisseur here? Um, and I can't smell it, but it actually does. It's, it is quite nice. It's different. Hmm. 
to you, you know, you, you get the cool mints. You know, I get, I've had these before like this, but not with a lemon. And that lemon is, it's really nice. Oh, well. Obviously, it's nice. I'm finishing off. And the, the flavours on the inside are surpassing the taste of chocolate on the outside, which is brilliant. But yeah. Okay, oh, so. Oh. I so want to hoe into the savouries, please, now. So want to hoe into them. All okay. right. So there's some awesome Aust Austrians on here. Wolfgang Puck, Gregor Mendel, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Marie Antoinette, Gustav Kilmat, Sigmund Freud, Nikola Tesla, and Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Cool, that's all that sweet. Hasburg family tree. At the height of the reign, the Habsburgs of Austria were the most powerful family in Europe. Not only did their centuries long rule, modern, rule, mold, modern Austria, from its borders to its palaces to its capital, it also gave us 900 years of family drama to explore. So let's get into it. So there's some, let's get some different things about them. Right. Oh. Austri oh, there's a recipe here. Austrian's western region of Tyrolee is home for the best hiking and skiing in the country. It's where they recipe for this hearty hash first came about. Okay. Oh, yum. That looks really good. That does look really good. There's the ingredients. If you want to pause, hang on. If you want to pause and read what it says here packed with plenty of potatoes, sizzling bacon, punchy spices. This is a go-to hashtag for locals, regular, ravenous post-ski, post-high hunger. In fact, we suggest scheduling a few hours between your yums and this meal, or plan to have tons of lefty, tasty leftovers. So there's the ingredients. If you want to pause on that and get the ingredients. It's not focusing when it's on the right way. Sorry guys, I have an incredibly itchy nose. Okay. Right here. And I'm going to zoom and get you the instructions. So here we go. Now you want to pause somewhere around here. So then if you want to try making that yourself. It does look good. Okay, so there's trivia questions. I won't go through those. All done with this box. Um, if you had our super yum box, you could still be snacking. Here's a few yums. Pomba ketchup snacks. So there's just a couple of extra snacks that if I was in the next box up. Oh, Maria Teresa Pralins. Pomba ketchup snacks. Uh, plum filled fricini. All right, so there we go, Austria. This is my order that I like them in. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, they don't count. So I love the peanut ones first, then the paprika chips, then Bobby. They're about the same. The milk wafer, then the nut joe, then the gingerbread. Then the mini fritz, then the cool mints, then the almond cream wafer cake, and then the chocolate. And those two things don't even get a rating for me. Mmm. Okay, so guys, thank you for watching. Um, I am now keep an eye out to see if anybody else got their universal yums yet. I didn't receive an email to say it was on its way, so I was so surprised when it turned up on the door. I knew I was having a package delivered today, but I wasn't expecting this one. <laughs> but yippee! <laughs> um, guys, thank you for watching. If you like this, please give me a thumb up, thumbs up. Give me a comment on 
some of the foods, what you think you would have uh, liked to try out. Just bring that down a bit so you can see it. But I'm going to pack these up, take these to work. The guys at work can get to and enjoy them. Maybe won't, not all of them will make it to work. I think I might eat the snipes. Um, yeah, they're going to work. <laughs> okay, so really, really, I like this box. <clears throat> There's only two things that I wouldn't eat at all, and one is the these and the banana. Um, but yeah, guys, so give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. What do you think you'd eat? Um, you know, if you haven't subscribed to me, why not? <laughs> uh, give us a, please subscribe. Hit the bell um, and you'll be notified of any uploads that I do or any lives. I do happen to do diamond painting and resin, UV resin and two pound epoxy resin now with a couple of other crafts thrown in. But this is predominantly a craft channel that I have um, with just this thrown in because I saw this and went, I've got to try it. So guys, thank you for watching and bye for now.